Good evening. My name's Wayne. Some of you may have seen me before. Before their fifth birthday. Oh, look, honey, Jennifer sent me an e-card. Attention, this email has been intercepted by the National Security Agency. We will be asking you a series of questions before returning you to your email. Don't be alarmed. Your participation is voluntary. Please stand by while we test microphones at your address. NAS. Go. Bedroom pillows. Go. Toilet seat. Go. Audio check. Please see your name. We couldn't hear you. Activating macros offline reader 2.1. Eyeball. Green go. Cranial implant. Green. Please look me in the eye while I read your mind. Thank you. First question. Do you consider yourself a law-abiding citizen? Mm. Wrong. You are lying. You have an unpaid parking ticket. Next question. Do you consider yourself morally upright? Mm. Wrong. You are lying. You have rented several R-rated movies. Next question. Have you ever made discouraging remarks about A. Our president. B. Our vice president. Mm. Wrong. You are lying. The fact that you find this humorous indicates you do not respect our leaders. Mm. Test over. Three incorrect answers. You have been categorized. An elevated security risk, your email will be monitored until further notice. Questionable content, such as, A, graphics, A, audio, will be censored. Thank you. We return you to your email. There is something very wrong with our world. In the ensuing years since the attacks upon New York's World Trade Center on September the 11th, 2001, our societies have gone down very different paths to what the people of the world had hoped to see ushered in with the new millennium. Now there is a sense of foreboding that encompasses the globe, a sense that all is not quite right, that some unseen malaise exists like a deeper undercurrent that flows just below the surface of everyday affairs. Though we are constantly told of all the problems that we face, concerns over global terrorism, famine, disease, global warming and global warfare, it has become apparent to many that below the surface problems we have repeatedly shown by the media, another problem does indeed exist. Such feelings are being expressed by a great many people, and these feelings are justified, for this earth and humanity itself does indeed face a massive threat. It is not the threat of global terrorism or the threat of war. It is not the threat of environmental disaster or global warming. It is something more sinister, something that lies within. Different people blame different groups or conspiracies for these problems. Club of Rome, the Bilderbergers, Freemasons, Bohemian Club, some say Zionists or the Vatican Conspiracy, some say Skull and Bones, and the list goes on. Well, the truth is that all of the above sources are in fact involved, each in its own way, and each carries out specific tasks. Zionism, for example, is merely one of the most visible arms of the octopus, because it is they who carry out most of the world's terrorism. But Zionism is merely one layer of the onion, as is the Bilderberg Group, Bohemian Club, or any other group. All these organizations are interlinked to one controlling body at the top, now widely known as the Illuminati. I covered a great deal about how the whole system is put together and how most of it functions in the Big Picture series which I posted on my YouTube channel, and a good deal about the Zionist arm of the Illuminati who, it would appear, were the true force behind the 9-11 attacks, is also covered in a third party series I posted on my YouTube channel entitled 9-11 Missing Links. 
9-11 missing links may be seen as an attack against Jews by some, but I think that it contains relevant and pertinent information concerning the true perpetrators of the 9-11 attacks, which is why I posted it. Zionism, however, as I previously said, is merely one layer of the Illuminati onion which encompasses all manner of secret societies. Zionism is merely one part. You can think of Zionism as like the Special Ops Division of the Illuminati, which in turn has offshoots such as the Mossad and CIA, organizations whose sole purpose is to undermine governments and create instability, and who control all global drug and human traffic trading, and who also control all other terrorist organizations down the food chain, such as Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda, by the way, is an organization which is wholly invented and is nothing more than a database consisting of a list of names of Mujahideen trained in terrorism by the CIA in the late 1970s. The words Al-Qaeda literally translate to the database in Arabic. Do not make the mistake of thinking organizations like the CIA and Mossad are the good guys, because they are most definitely not. They are anything but. All the world is a stage and everything of importance that occurs on it is planned to happen that way. And it is through this Illuminati system of intertwining secret societies that the entire world is ultimately run. The vital control centers of this mechanism are the three Illuminati city-states, all of which are separate, self-governing states within host countries. The first is the City of London, which is the center for monetary control. The second is Washington's District of Columbia, which is the center for military control. And the third is Vatican City in Rome, which is the center for spiritual control. Each city-state is a completely separate, self-governed and sovereign state within an external sovereign country. Each has its own laws, its own news services and its own infrastructure. Each pays no taxes to the sovereign country in which it is located and each has its own flag. Each flag bears either the three stars, the three crowns or the three dragons, signifying the three city-states. Each city-state also has its own obelisk as the bloodlines that control the world can be clearly traced back to ancient Egypt. These are the three Illuminati control centers of the world and it is from these three control centers that control over all aspects of the world is achieved. So then, who are the controllers and why? Why are they doing this to the human race? When these people already control all the money and all the resources and already start wars and famines at whim, why take it any further? What else is there to gain? Well, here's where explanations are decidedly more difficult, because even the Illuminati themselves say there is another unseen hand that controls even them. And who this hidden hand may actually belong to? Well, that will have to remain the subject of another video. But suffice to say for now that the reality that we live in, what we perceive as being reality, is not reality. We create what we perceive to be reality with our emotions and our intent. Those who control the human race know this, and so do many other cultures, and the evidence to support such an argument being true is in fact everywhere. We as Westerners think we are more advanced than other races because we have flashy cars, mobile phones and plasma TVs. But these are all merely trinkets. They are nothing more than baubles and beads designed to distract you from the real power in the universe. A power that we are all connected to. This connection with the greater power is now becoming more pronounced and more and more people are waking up every day as we approach the line of the galactic ecliptic and the frequency of the earth and everything and everyone on it rises accordingly. The power elite know this and they know that the frequency of this planet and of our entire solar system is rising and so they are combating this rising of frequency and awakening of deeper human awareness with a virtual sensory onslaught. TV, sex, meaningless celebrity gossip, more and more baubles and beads, and more and more by promoting an atmosphere of fear. Wars, terrorism, the myth of global warming, food shortages, gas shortages, avian flu, anything they can think of to produce negative energy and a climate of fear, stress, hatred and intolerance. And to a certain degree they've succeeded. Until now. For now, people are beginning to wake up.